you're going to arrive at 8 o'clock and you're going to give yourself plenty of time to rig the boat. You're going to plan to have yourself rigged by 9.30. Right there. Okay. So you're going to consider your clothes. Okay. You're going to laminate your equipment. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to gather your equipment. So we need a set of spars, a mast, a rudder, a dagger board. So for today, we're going to keep this rudder that Denise is working on out here. Mm -hmm. We have a mast that's here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take a sail from over here someplace mm -hmm. okay when you take the spars out you're going to take them out of the back of the pram shed i think all you guys saw me doing that this morning so you don't take the heads off the pram sailors mm -hmm. very important <laughs> okay mm -hmm. um what christine is setting up right now is she's setting up two bins each this bin one to go. You pick this one up. will have four main sheets four yes. bungees and four painters in it so one of you will take that bin, the white bin, out in the morning, and that way everything will be set up for you, okay? When you get to the water, you're going to drain any water out of the hull before you take the boat down because it's much easier to drain it at an angle, okay? So that's number four. And then you're going to put a drain plug in. The drain plugs are on the shelf. Uh, into the left, there is a plastic container with them. What we'll do next week is we'll put four in a Ziploc and put them in that white thing. So you, that white thing? The white basket. Thing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're going to take the drain plugs back out. And put them back in the white thing. We don't want to get this space so they know where should we put okay. this. So, so this, mm -hmm. you, you don't get all these bins. No, you just take the top. Oh, okay. Because this bin is going back in my car. Okay. And it will definitely not fit in that locker. Good. So this bin is going to go as a spot. Floor. So, and then this bin can just go this. Just, just stack them on the floor for right now in there. Okay. And Inside the uh, last locker. Okay. So that when y'all get ready, they'll be inside the locker and you just pick the top bin. It has everything you need for four. And she said our plugs will be in there too. Yeah. In a Ziploc bag. Sailor. Four. Four. Would you, four. Sailor? Should I put four plugs in yeah. there? Could you, Sailor? Spray if I hold? <laughs> put four plugs in there. Here's a Ziploc bag. <laughs> Let me have it. And I will label it plugs. plugs. And remember when Good you idea. come back Bam. to put, put them back, back in, in there. Bag. I got that. I do okay. got that. So we're going to drain. Okay. They recommend four or three. We don't really want the, bo the bottom scratching. Okay. Yep. Right. So okay. if you can put it on a dolly, put it on a dolly. If you can put it on the water but not on top of the rocks, you put it on the beach. But just try not to scrape it along the bottom. Because the bottom is the part that makes the boat fast. Okay. Okay. They used it on another sail. Um, be happy. You're going to sail a sunfish. That's what it says next. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Um, when we rig a boat, we rig right. So you always rig from the right side of the boat. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna go grab a sail. Okay. And then we're gonna lay the spars down, and we're gonna run the halyard through. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the spars so that the gooseneck is on the bottom. Mm -hmm. of the two spars. These are called spars, mm -hmm. okay? So that it's kind of lined up with the hole. Oh my God. And then, <laughs> if you're in sea fleet, you want to make sure you have this, which is a sea streamer, on your top spar. Okay. So they tied them on this morning, so hopefully they'll still be here. Are they all and, that color? Yes, they're all either this color or pink, because I have two different things of tape. So now you're going to unwrap the, the sail. If you see, this sail has been wrapped by very nicely. Yes. This is how I want to see the sails, mm -hmm. um, because the sails are all relatively new, and we want to take really good care of them. Did Chris Kelly go there? No. Okay. What she did is a single crochet, if mm -hmm. you know how to do a single crochet. So this is oh. all just looped through. Mm -hmm. so, nice. oh, so if you do it like that, it comes out like this. Okay. Can you show how to do it? Yeah. Okay. So what you're going to do? Yeah. Let's see that. Is you're just basically going to go through like this. You're going to go over and under, and you're going to work yourself up with a loop and another loop, and then you're just going to going like this, and then that way, when you pull it out, it comes out really quickly. And that's a single crochet. It's a single crochet. Can you only do it with the halyard? Can you unpop me? Yes. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So this is your halyard. And you can do single 
So what you want to do is you're how you're lined. Mm -hmm. See where the line is lining mm -hmm. up? Mm -hmm. Should line up with this nut. Mm -hmm. And that means when it goes up, it's not going to be twisted. Okay? Mm -hmm. So sometimes they get a little mixed up in the closet. Mm -hmm. So if you put your sail up and all the spars and everything are all twisted, it probably means that that got kind of cocked one way or the other. Okay? Mm -hmm. can, can you hand me a mask, please? This? Yeah. That's it. Okay. Have an extra, what is this? What is this? That's an extra. That goes on the top shelf if you want to take it out of the way. Well, I, I, I am being. <laughs> then just leave it there for now. Just back it up so nobody trips on it. Thank you, Christine. Just take it and move it that way so it's out of the way. So when you're rigging this by yourself, you're just going to leave this kind of on the bolt like this. Are you taking a movie for this? stays pretty well. I'm not stabbing it. If, you're, if your mask has one of these loops on it, for right now you're going to ignore it. Okay? And it, this is for another day. Okay? So you're going to take this, and there is one mask that has a cleat on it. If you happen to end up with the mask with the cleat on it, the cleat needs to face away from the sail. So it's going to end up on this side. So I'm going to take the bitter end of the halyard, and I'm going to put it through the mast cap. I'm going to turn this. I'm going to line it up somewhat so it stays. Okay. Congratulations. So you want, you want the halyard coming towards the fair leaves, okay? So you don't want this twisted, so you want it to look like a nice triangle when you put this in. Don't worry about it, I'll get it. So you're going to put this in here, and it's going to go like this, okay? So now is the point when you get your sponge. So, congratulations. So hopefully somebody left me one of my sponges. Okay. So if you don't have a sponge, use something. The reason this is important is you see the lines on the boat. Mm -hmm. We don't want to make more of them. Mm -hmm. Most of the spars have a plastic non-round cap on this end, mm -hmm. but some of them don't. So this, this nut will actually end up on the deck. So you don't want to do that. So you want something under here when you raise your sail. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to find the wind, which appears to be over here. So we're going to take the bow of the boat and we're going to put it into the wind. Because if you raise the sail, when we come up now, it's going to be in everybody's face. of the mass so when you're on the beach you can just take a quick look and that way you know which way the wind is coming from so you know to align the bow of the boat in the same orientation as those things right okay mm -hmm. so now you're going to take your halyard and you're going to look around and you're going to make sure no one's in your way and what I normally say is I'm going up with my sail now so that if anybody is around, I don't injure them. And then normally I go up pretty fast. I like us. Would you like to And then when I get to here, I need to keep one hand on the halyard, and then I lift the goose neck a little bit. And then I look up. I know how Okay. So there's a few things I want to see. I want to see. The halyard coming up pretty straight to the fairway. And I want to see gooseneck kissing. I mean, the I want to see everything kissing and touching up there. OK? 
Okay, see how it's all tight? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I want to see this pretty not twisted this way or that way. So this actually looks really good. Okay. So now mm -hmm. I'm going to do what some people call is a trucker's hitch. Mm -hmm. And this allows some extra purchase to keep the sail up. Some people call it a six knot. So I'm going to make a circle and then I'm going to reach through it. So now I have like a slip knot. Okay. The slip knot has to release in a downward fashion. That way you can get it out in an emergency. So you're going to reach one hand of five. You're going to keep your sail up. And then you're going to have the same equipment for the whole time. So as you do this, you'll know how long your halyard is and how much extra you could use for your purchase. So for today, I'm going to come here. I'm going to do a six knot here. You want all the lines to run in the same direction. That way when they tighten up, they don't foul each other. So you're going to go from forward, fore, to aft. You're going to come through the fair lead. And then you're going to come through your trucker's hitch or your six knot or whatever you want to call it. And then you're going to go back through your fair lead. So both are tightening from the front of the boat towards the back of the boat. And the reason, the way you know you've done it well is this is pointing towards your cleat. So everything looks really nice. So now I'm gonna cinch this up. I'm gonna move my goose neck a little bit and I'm gonna make sure this is really tight up at the top, okay? It's not yet. The goose neck is good. We're gonna have to tighten the goose neck because they've been drying. Okay, so now, See how that looks tight? This is coming down at a nice... So now I'm gonna go around the pleat and I'm gonna... So now I'm like that. Oh. So once you've got it pleated here, what I normally do is I come and do another one on the other side. So again, my lines are all running in the same direction. So now I'm gonna put my bang on. So. Your gooseneck is adjustable, so what has been going on is there are two lines on your gooseneck. Under normal circumstances, you're going to leave your gooseneck at the front line. Mm -hmm. If it gets windy, on the water, this thing actually, you can slide back and put it here. It should be snug. This one is not snug yet. So I need to twist it mm -hmm. until it gets a little tighter and then bring it down and now it's snug. And I want it at about this ma magic marker line on here, okay? And that's for windy or not so windy? Not so windy. Okay. You want to bring more sail forward when it's windy. Okay. So you want to make your make oh. sail kind of smaller. Okay. So you want to bring your gooseneck Oh, okay. When it's windy to deep that makes out. sense. Okay. Because what they talk about is there's a point in the middle of the sail, which is like the pressure point, and if you can't keep the boat flat, you want to bring that point forward, and that allows you to keep the boat flat. Because you cannot sail upwind in a sunfish unless the boat is flat. Because you're just going to slide sideways. Because if the dagger board is at an angle, the boat's going to go like this in the water. Does that make sense? Yes. So you mm -hmm. need to adjust things until the boat is flat in order to go wind work. Okay? So now we're going to do a vang. Under normal circumstances, we're going to do basically a light vang. So we're going to come through the fair lead, around the mast from front to back. Okay? And then again, the goal is to have all of our lines running towards our cleat. So then we're going to do this. And then we're going to put a little pressure on our goose leg. Like that. So that's going to keep our sail a little bit flatter. If it's really windy, we're going to put a lot of pressure on our goose neck. And then our sail will be flatter. And that will depower it if it's breezy. Oh. Make sense? Mm -hmm. The flatter the sail, the less curvature depowers the sail. Okay. Okay, so for now, I'm going to bring this back up because 
I don't need it that tight. I just kind of need it present most of the time we're sailing. In the morning, it's generally not that windy. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go around my pleat again. I'm going to pleat my line off. And then I'm going to run this forward. So now I've got this extra piece left. And what I'm going to do with this extra piece is I'm going to come to my forward spar, my top spar, this spar. And I'm going to tie a little bowline uh, here. And I want the bowline tight enough that it does not slide down past this nut. Because I don't want this to slide down and end up on my sail. I want to have the shortest end I can have, so I have the biggest loop possible. But So that's a little bit long, but at the beginning it's easier to tie that way. And what this is, is this is what, as you get better, you're not going to use it probably at the beginning, when it's very light wind, you can use this to pull your sail out because the spars are very heavy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't like to go out when it's very light and you're sailing downwind. So I want you to rig the same way every time so you get used to rigging. Make sense? Okay, so now we're going to add a couple of things to the boat. We're going to start by adding a painter. And the way we do a painter is we never want to get towed from here because if the boat tends to accelerate very quickly, you can rip the front of the boat apart. So, when you do your painter or your bow line, <laughs> you're going to start at your mast. Mm -hmm. Some of these have loops in them. Mm -hmm. I don't want the loop around your mast. I want you to tie a bowline around your mast. Okay. What we've done with some of them, the green ones, have a loop at the end. And what that will do is if you're having trouble climbing into the boat, you're going to have a loop at this end. So you can do two things. If you capsize, you can put the loop on your arm, and that way you can use both hands to raise the boat, and the boat doesn't float away, so you don't have to hold it. The other thing you can do is if you have a loop here, you can wrap this around the main sheet block and make a step to put your foot in to give you a little bit of leverage. So what I prefer is I prefer that they have a loop that'll fit over my arm or I can put my foot in. So kind of like that. So that way, using my two hands, my boat doesn't float away. So then what I do with this is it goes through here, is if I'm getting towed, I'd like the boat to get towed from the bow and not sideways. So I'd like it to track this way, but I want the weight on the mast for safety. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it around here, and then we're going to tuck this under your bungee. So what I do is I do this the same way every time. That way when I capsize, I know where this is. So I can grab it if it's really windy and my boat does not get away from me. Okay? So when you put your bungee on, I didn't have fingernails for a while. So I always put the knot over here so I can pull on the knot. Mm -hmm. So I always do it the same way. The bungee is going to go around the splash guard. The plastic part is going to be by the daggerboard trunk. And this little knot is here. So I can pull this out and tuck this under. Very okay. nice. Very so nice. That's, now I know that if I have a problem, I can grab this from here. And it comes with me. I actually normally do it from the top. So that way it doesn't get stuck on the and I can just grab it as I'm falling off of my boat into the water, <laughs> and then my boat stays with me, okay? So, this is a main sheet. We have a couple of different main sheets that are in the cabin, in the windless locker. Some of them are a little heavier, some of them a little lighter. But they all have like a green and a red speck, so you know they're a main sheet. If you have bad hands, you're better with a heavy one, if you don't care and it's light breeze, you're better with a light one. So when you rig the main sheet, you always start at the stern of the boat. So you're going to start here and you want to be on the right side. Thank so you. Thank you. you is I'm you want to make sure that this is not twisted in any way. 
away from getting put away because you don't want it to twist on itself. So you kind of just want to make sure it isn't all screwy. You're going to do another bowling. So practice your bowlings at home so that you're not standing here having trouble with a knot. Okay? Mm -hmm. You want a decent end on this because you don't want this to come out while you're on the water. And you want a loop that's big enough that it slides on your traveler. This red line is your traveler. But not so big that it fits over the corner of the boat and can get stuck back there. So something about like that is good. Leave a little tail. That way um, it won't come out as easily. So when you rig this, what should happen is you should go block, loop, loop, block, block. So that means I'm going to go through a block. I'm going to need a lighter main sheet for this book. That was what I was going to ask. Well, won't, won't it be hard to get it through those cleats? This is, this is one of the heavier main sheets. See, this is the thing that we're going to talk about. All of the equipment. Can you get me a lighter main sheet? Okay. We're going to pause. I'm going to make a bowling. Right. Around the traveler. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna make a loop and I'm gonna have a reasonable end on here so that it doesn't come out. Okay? So when I see you put the, the line, the way you put the line, you kind of switched it, so it's just easier start? for me to tie the bowl in that okay. way. It doesn't make any difference. Oh, yeah, just so tie a bowl in. I just tie my bowl in. Yeah. I'm left handed, so I tie my bowl backwards. Okay. Oh, are you just figure out how it works for you. So don't pay attention to how I tie my bowl in. Okay. So just learn how to do it. You've got it. You got it. I'm going to go block, loop, loop, block, block. So I'm going to start here. Mm -hmm. Go block. These are the loops that keep the main sheet off of your life jacket. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, you really want to remember to put the main sheet through those blocks. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. Now, we want to pull this through so uh -huh. that it makes that sound uh -huh. when it comes in. See, it makes a sound. It doesn't make a sound. So we want it to make that clicking sound when we pull it. And when you end up with this boat, you're going to avoid that other part because we don't cleat. Okay. What number are you working? Oh, so wait, say that again. We yes. don't, we don't use we're not using that. So that's just going to hang out there. And I can't get it off. I'm scared that the boat's going to leak if I get it off. So when you're starting out, what you're going to do is, can someone come over here? We're going to take the sail out to 90 degrees, which is about there. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put a figure eight or a stopper knot in. So the sail really can't get out past 90 degrees. So this will help you if you let go of your halyard so that your sail doesn't go. Okay? So, so these halyards, are, these main sheets are a little bit long. They're all going to be slightly different. But that's about 90 degrees where she is. It's probably a little bit less. So I probably need to bring this out a little bit. As you get better, you're going to move this knot back about four inches because there are going to be situations where you might want to go a little past 90, but not now. Okay? So you're fine. And then what I normally do is I put another stopper knot in the end. That way when I grab the line, I have something to hold my hand. Okay, so that's how to rig the main sheet. Okay, so we break the main sheet, we break the bungee, and we have break the painter. Okay, so let's bring that back. So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to just talk a little bit about the putting the rudder on. I like to put the rudder on first, but we've been a little bit um, mixed up today. So when you put the rudder on, it has to go under the traveler. Right now it's very obvious because the main sheet is rigged, but if you come and the main sheet is not on, you don't want to do this, okay? Because then it's, you're going to get all tangled. So you need to always put your rudder underneath 
the travel, okay? And then you're going to bring this here, and there's little springy things that you're going to have to line up. And the most important part of this whole process is checking to make sure it's really on before you go out, okay? This flips up like this. So when you're on the beach, you're going to leave it flipped up. Before you leave the beach, you're going to work from the back of the boat to your, the front of the boat. So you're going to put your rudder down. You're going to check your main sheet to make sure it's not fouled and it's snug. You're going to put your dagger board down part way, and then you're going to get in your boat. Front, back to front when you're leaving. Some of these will work if you do this, this the rudder will actually go down. Most of them won't, okay? So most of the time you have to physically push it down with your hand and physically pull it up with your hand when you come back in. When you come back in, the first thing you're going to do is you come into the beach, you're going to turn up into the wind, get your boat to stop, take your dagger board out, and you're going to put your rudder up. That way there's nothing in the water to make the boat go any way that you don't want it to go. And you always lead your sunfish from the back. Okay? Good? Cut. Cut. All right. Because right now I'm going to take the bang out first. First thing we do. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically just going to run the lines back from whence they came. So now I'm at a point where I can hold up here. And then I'm going to take this out. The most challenging part of this whole thing is getting this knot out, especially if it's been really breezy. So there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Sometimes if you do this, it pops. Um, sometimes it doesn't, so sometimes you'll have to bring it all the way back up and pull a little harder on it. It seems easier to pop it than to try to take it out with your fingernails in general. Once you're there, you're gonna release it enough that it's stable on the deck so that it doesn't come off your sponge or whatever you're using. If you wanna be really cool, you can try to come back here. You can try to take the sail down like this because if it's really light and you didn't get the sail wet, you don't open the water at the dock, you don't have to wash it. So now I've got, sail always goes on the left because we reap from the right, and then it doesn't have a problem with the cubing. So the recommended way to fold the sail back up is to bring it out to a triangle, do one fold, and then roll. And if you pull as you roll, and you roll wide, Nothing slides around and it comes out really neat. But otherwise, it becomes very challenging. Now you're doing crochet, single now crochet. crochet. So I'm going to go above and below. And I still have the main sheet on because I'm not doing this perfectly today. So I'm going to do that in a minute. I should have taken the main sheet out first, but that's how you roll the sail. Then I can sneak it out because it will come out. So we, from now on, we should actually take the main, take the main sheet out. Before we lower the sail? Before you, before you fold it up. So you can lower it. And then take and the main sheet. kind of tie it ugly. Okay. And then take the main sheet out. Okay. And then tie it nice. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Tie it ugly. Just like kind of make it so it doesn't go in the water. Initially. Initially. If you take the main sheet out with the sail up and a gust comes, your sail's going to be all over the place. So best to take the sail down first. Okay? Okay. Are we good? Yeah. Is there anything else we need to go over on de-rigging? I don't think so. Um, you guys 
we'll get an email with a boat assignment mm -hmm. and a set of equipment as soon as we do that. Um, you get down to the beach, you're going to drain the boat with at least two people yeah. and then put your plug in before you take it off the rack. Okay. Okay? Yep. Okay. Bam. And I'm going to show where the plug goes. Right back here. Okay. I'm going to start putting a few things away. Okay. Okay. 